that going. Let me start again. Welcome to today's session. My name is Paul Rankin. I'm the Provincial Manager for KZN, involved in our online processes. Um, I see the numbers are coming through. We've had a large registration process, but yeah, they are coming through. So let's just start the session straight away. Um, let me just go to that view so we can see everybody there. Rian van den Berg and Stephen Bestbeer. I think I had to pronounce that correctly. We'll get him to, to go through those details. Our two guest um, presenters or, or guest or um, yeah, guest presenters today. Um, and today is slightly different to our other sessions. We're looking at some technology development that's taking place or technology processes. Um, so maybe just quickly welcome to Rian first and then Stephen, just a few words from your side. Um, just to welcome everybody on board as everybody's coming through. Good afternoon, good morning, um, all. I sit here in Gauteng, and we're going to talk about the work of the Centrum for Technology. We have with us today one of our diamond partners in the Center for Technology, which is Snaplify. And I'm going to hand over to Stephen to introduce himself just uh, briefly so that everyone knows where he fits in. Uh, thanks, Rian, um, and thanks for having me here today. So, um, my background is actually in teaching, in education, so I'm very excited to be able to speak to, to teachers and anybody involved in education today, and to be able to just let people know a little bit more what's available through the Snapify platform. Yeah, no, that's great, super. Thanks very much for that, and it's really great to have you know, both of you folks on board today and going through details. I'm um, talking about details, just so that those of you that aren't familiar with the process know where, we, where we're going. Just a brief intro. We're not going to spend much time on this, but just so that you know where to ask questions. And please, the whole session is an interactive session, so please ask questions. Um, under the Q&A box, please type in the questions there. Um, it's probably the easiest place for us to handle the questions. We can then filter them. If there are questions that we can't handle or there are too many, we will get back to you. The whole session is recorded. We're also live streaming onto Facebook at the moment as well. Um, and we will send you details and follow-up information that you may need. So really sit back and enjoy the content. Don't stress about getting all the links and all the details. If they do come through, I will send some of them through. Um, we'll take a note of them. But we will be sending all the attendees, everybody who's registered, we are going to be sending them a, a shared file with all the details on a bit later as well. So please ask questions. This is the time to ask those questions with regards to what Snaplify have got and, and where we're sitting with regards to digital reading, if we want to call it that. Briefly our, yeah, briefly, our provincial managers, um, there they are. I'm not going to spend too much time on going that. I want to give as much time as possible to Stephen and Rian. Uh, but they are provincial managers and their contact details um, all the way from the Eastern Cape down through to the Western Cape. We've got a number of our provincial managers on board today, so welcome to them. I'm going to be disappearing into the background and handling the behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, and I'm going to hand over right now to Rian so he can take it through from there. Rian, over to you. Thanks, Paul. Maybe just a quick housekeeping rule. I think we're going to be doing most of the session in English today. Uh, if someone uh, needs to ask a question in Afrikaans or if, if there's a problem uh, language policy-wise, uh, we, we did not schedule a, uh, an Afrikaans and an English session separately for this session. Uh, so, yeah, bear with us, uh, but yeah, please ask a question in, in whatever language preference you have. Maybe just as a little bit of a background, uh, the Center for Technology, which is a, an initiative that FETSAS launched a few years ago, is, is an initiative that we want to advise on matters in the space of digital education, education technology. Uh, one of our mantras for the past few years have been that uh, we have to learn as we live, meaning that our living space, our, our uh, regular day-to-day -day life, has changed drastically with the invent of mobility, cell phones, connectivity available everywhere. So, so we're, we're definitely advancing and developing very quickly as a society goes. And our education spaces need to adapt to that. We are teaching this year. So the matrix of 2030 already in, in, in grade two this year. And soon, the world will look far more different than it is looking now. So, so the drive and the focus and the background for the Center for Technology is really to advise schools uh, to assist in, in taking this digital journey forward. And it's not a digital journey. It's not a technology journey. It is using the tools of our time to more efficiently teach and learn. It's all about schooling and core business of schooling. 
So yeah, that's, that's kind of a, a background to it. Our, one of our drives this year uh, was published in a newsletter that went to all our members on Thursday last week. And, and we're changing uh, a nuance of our uh, focus for this year and we're calling it govern as we live. Uh, governing bodies, governing body members, management teams of schools. Um, how do we use the tools that we have in our space and better govern and give direction in the school? And one of the focus areas would be the introduction of the thinking process, the thoughts, uh, thought leadership of the CIO, or as we call it, the chief information officer. Most companies have a CEO, a CFO, a CXO, CEO, um, uh, all, all the chief officers are, are well known. And over the past few years, the CIO has become very instrumental because most things we, we deal with, we work in the digital space and the information space. Uh, as part of that drive, we, we dropped uh, three big issues as, as the first focus for a CIO or a governing body that, that starts to adopt those things. And the first three of them was number one, the uh, issue of the economy. We find that schools uh, are feeling the pinch of the economy. It's tight mm -hmm. out there. So, so we're definitely looking at services and products and solutions that are available to school uh, at either a reduced price or a free option, uh, but that adds value or that saves money. So we're looking, looking at those issues. The second one is that, uh, which, which might even be affecting today's webinar in some areas in the country, and that is that of load shedding. How do we keep going with the power off and and there our tagline is how do we keep the internet lights on forget the lights during the day but if the internet is on we can still function in a big way and the last one is is sadly and tragically a big focus at the start of this year and that is learner safety uh, all around the news all around the country there's been a lot of issues on learner safety and and we're stepping into the space of physical safety as well as virtual safety so that's a big focus for the center of technology uh, kicking off the year. So, so that's just a little bit of a background. That leads into why we're talking to Snaplify and, and Stephen specifically today, because Snaplify is one of our diamond members in the Center for Technology, and we've got various uh, edtech leaders, edtech companies in the market that, that want to serve our schooling community. And they've got great solutions, and we're going to talk about those. So, um, yeah, Stephen, I don't know if you want to want to quickly just just give us your position at um, Snaplify, and then uh, the, the session is going to take the form of an interview. So, I hope you guys are not expecting a, a lengthy PowerPoint. Uh, so, we're going to test something today. We're going to have a, a very interactive session. We are going to ask you guys to ask questions. Steek your hand up, tuck it in 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 France, a vraag in in maak die gesprek jou ne. En dan as jy uh, pen en papier het, uh, neem notas, kom ons, kom ons vraag, vraag, kom ons maak notas van die sessie. So, jy is baie welkom om deel te neem in gesprek. Stephen, just a short intro in your role at Snaplify, and maybe what does Snaplify do in the market? So, um, Rian, I am the Senior Account Manager at Snaplify, and basically my role revolves around helping schools to make the most of the Snaplify platform. Um, and, but... Uh, that also includes really educating um, schools about the best way to go about integrating digital resources and content and um, services into um, the school infrastructure, uh, the ecosystem. So it's really kind of a, a hand-holding um, relationship on this journey. Brilliant. But well, thanks for joining us and thanks for sharing your time and, and uh your uh, your knowledge and experience with us. Uh, yes, I find sir. it interesting that we that we talk about a digital solution on a digital platform, which is which is a webinar. So we've already become used become used to it. So maybe just to to fall into where we are in in the uh, landscape in the country. I do remember that in in the state of the nation address last year, not not the one about a week ago, but the 2019 uh, state of the nation address, President Ramaphosa committed to to a digital road for public uh, education, digitizing the public school education system over the next few years. Uh, there's a lot, lot of questions around that, but, but what does digital education actually mean? How, how can we demystify it and make it easy? Well, I think there's a, there's a lot of, you know, people have strong feelings about using digital tools in uh, education, but the reality is that dig dig digital education is a great leveler. Um, it really opens up learning opportunities for everyone. And this is really one of Snapify's key drivers, just breaking down um, barriers to access. And, um, 
you know, you're just talking about what does it mean for schools today? So, you know, in 2019, one third of sub-Saharan uh, African owned a smartphone. And in some places, mobile phones are actually more accessible, more ubiquitous than access to electricity. So, you know, as, as far-fetched as some people thought the, the uh, president's um, goals were, you know, the reality is that we're all using digital um, resources, digital devices, and um, it's far more um, accessible in schools than many people think. And uh, what we're really trying to do is make it uh, to harness that for learning. So we're really trying to meet learners where they are um, and, and build on that. And um, one of the strings of education is that it's scalable. I would have say in, a, in an urban environment, but um, they have access to the internet, they have access to digital resources, and uh, it's possible to scale out a solution using digital resources. And then um, obviously um, schools that have access from an infrastructure point of view, if it's um, distance, um, if it's just lack of um, transport facilities, for example, and uh, that don't have access to resources, now um, they have access to thousands and thousands of resources uh, digitally. Um, and, and then obviously from a digital point of view, you've got access not only to, to content and, and um, you know, um, hard copy books, that would be, it would be text, but now you've got um, access to video and audio and really it allows schools to uh, differentiate uh, their learning approach to accommodate learners with different learning styles. Um, and, you know, this is a powerful way of helping learners, especially in a 20, 21st century environment to engage with content. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a number of ways that we can really um, harness um, the digital resources and digital uh, technology to, to benefit schools. Yes, I, I, I think there's, there's possibly a fear that, you know, suddenly everything that we're used to must be taken away. Instead of just using a tool to enhance mm. an already efficient process that we have, uh, I think very few of us uh, went on a training course to use our cell phones, but yet no, possibly in, in most cases where I've, where I've presented some, some uh, material over the last year and I ask people, where do they read mostly? They would tell you they read the newspaper, emails, WhatsApps text messages, whatever sort, on their cell phones. So, so the mobility and, and the fact that reading takes place. That brings me to, a, to, to a, possibly a bigger focus. Uh, one of the campaigns that we drove last year in the FETSA Center for Technology was that of back to school, back to basics, back to reading. Now, reading, writing, and arithmetic is, uh, well, those are the, were the three original R's and in the 21st century, we added to them uh, algorithms, another R, rhythms, respect, responsibility, relationship, um, and, and, and some of those, but uh, reading is still seen as the mother of a lot of learning processes. Yes, mm -hmm. experiencing and hearing, but reading is a self-paced thing. So, um, and, and, and I think we're missing it. Nick Spall published some uh, research two years ago that said 78% of the country's grade four learners do not read for meaning. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us read for the test, taking the test. We just consume information to take a test. But Maybe from your uh, professional point of view, uh, education background, and, and sitting in a Snappify and an e-reader type platform, why do you think reading is so important? And why is it that our nation and learners read without understanding as per these, these reports? Where, where do we miss it with reading? Well, I, I think firstly, it needs to be acknowledged. And I think uh, we realize that literacy really gives people a lifelong access to, to learning, um, you know, if we're gonna prepare our learners for the 21st century workplace, uh, we need them to be lifelong learners. Um, and the reality is that we, uh, you know, reading is the foundation of, um, you know, citizenship. It allows you to participate in a healthy democracy. It's from 
improving empathy, developing critical reasoning skills, which are, for, are key for participating in, in our society effectively. Um, and so really there, there's a number of reasons why there's such a big focus on, on reading. So we have acknowledged that you know, as, as a company that we really need to um, work hand in hand with stakeholders that are already um, promoting literacy initiatives in the community, in education, and um, to really pool resources with um, these organizations. You know, really no, no need to reinvent the wheel, but if we can all work together, we can make um, sustainable um, differences in the challenges that we face in reading. Another, another key area where, where Snapify contributes is, you know, just acknowledging the, how critical it is that learners uh, read in mother tongue language. So, um, especially from a young age, you know, it's not just about developing their, their reading skills, but it is also about developing a sense of identity, about cultural cohesion, um, and just grounding learners um, in who they are. And um, in this regard, uh, we've worked with a number of suppliers, um, really to be able to uh, provide content, um, local language content, in fact, in all 11 South African languages uh, for free. And, um, you know, um, some of our, our, our audience might be familiar with um, Nalibali or, or Book Dash or the African Storybook Project. So these are all projects that we've aligned with and helped to distribute their content to schools, you know, that would never have ad had access to content in the past. And um, we're very proud to have these, these resources available on our platform. And, um, you know, I think that, yeah. No, I, I think that's one of the key things. Uh, we've had a few questions and, and hands raised. I think mm -hmm. that's the critical thing. And, and maybe we should jump straight into, uh, we've got the background, we've, we've got the issues. We're in a digital world. Reading is important. Snaplify has some resources available and it, we're not necessarily here to, to talk about just the platform, but the access and the value to schools. So mm -hmm. um, I think one of the best secrets for me uh, and, and Fetsos has, has uh, engaged as a vendor in the Snaplify store space, but I think one of the best, best kept secrets in the country is the free library for all schools in South Africa. And can I say that again? Uh, <laughs> sit back, hold, hold on to your seat. There's a free e-library for all mm. schools, public schools in South Africa available on the Snaplify platform. Can you quickly tell us about it and then maybe jump into how do we get and where do we get it? Okay. Uh, I, think crowd, I think the crowd is convinced with, we're preaching to the choir, but, yes. but let's, let's show them where to get it and what type of resources you mentioned, multi-language uh, books, you mentioned uh, easy onboarding, uh, and, and I want to mention free again because you know, we, we're talking about the economic uh, situation. So, so, so tell us about the free, the free library and what it entails. I don't know if there are terms and conditions and how to register. Is it available okay. to schools only? And okay. then maybe, maybe take us there uh, and, and, and let's show, show the, the audience how to engage uh, or, or how to ask questions about that. No, um, thanks, Rian. You know, I think, I don't know, I'll try and do it quickly, but to be honest, as an ex-English teacher, uh, this is something that I'm really excited about because I believe that this really addresses key barriers um, to ad um, addressing our literacy issues uh, in South Africa. So, like you said, first point is free registration. There's no small print or anything like that. Any school in the country can go online to register and I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail in a moment. But really, um, the, the Snapify platform then gives um, school access to the e-library, which is really an incredibly powerful tool um, in addressing um, the literacy challenges. So 24 seven access. So basically, um, wherever a, there is an internet connection initially um, to access the e-library, um, it is available if um, learners are in a boarding school, if they're going home over the school holidays, over the weekends, after, uh, after hours, after extramural activities. So um, access is a, a real key component of that because what we see is that even schools with um, 
you know, well-established, well-resourced hard copy libraries. If you look at the, the number of hours in the day when learners have access to those books, it's actually, you know, during break times and then after, after school for an hour or two while the librarian's there. But, um, you know, yeah, even as early as grade four, a lot of, we see a big dip in reading um, as the learners become more involved in sport and extramural activities. But now with a 24 seven access to your e-library, um, that's not a problem anymore. The learners can now, you know, after rugby practice and go onto their phone or tablet or any kind of device that they have with them and take out a, a rugby book in or whatever reading level, whatever language they're looking for. And, you know, while their moms come to pick them up or reading it on the, on the bus. Um, and then obviously from a, a point of view with schools that don't have um, resources like a library or a full-time librarian, it solves a lot of problems. This whole system is fully automated. So a learner takes the book out and after a set period of time, the book automatically returns itself, which just solves a number of issues like books getting lost, uh, fines, and um, you know, it, it sounds like uh, maybe a trivial uh, issue, but if you're trying to convince teenagers or, or young kids to read, and they know that when I take out this book, this is a two week commitment that I have to bring it back, otherwise I'm gonna get a fine. You know, taking those kinds of barriers away helps a lot um, because now you don't even have to think about having to bring the book back because it automatically returns itself. And, and then obviously from a damaged point of view, the books don't get damaged or lost. And, um, you know, we said that the library is free, but the library, it's the platform not, is, um, not only is the platform free, but we have about 50,000 free titles in the library, um, including um, foundation phase content all the way to, you know, the upper, the senior phases. Um, past papers are available across multiple curriculums, not just CAPS. Uh, we've got the classics, we've got study guides, um, and it's a great way for, for schools to drive a, a reading culture in their school, um, you know, if they don't necessarily have the resources, you know, you, you don't have to sacrifice a, a classroom to turn it into a, a library, you don't have to add it to a, a librarian's um, portfolio, etc. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of advantages, you're going to have to stop me. Please, please um, go to the go to the platform if you can share your screen and just let's, let's just show the audience what is available, how easy it is to onboard, and uh, okay. maybe maybe show us uh, some of the resources. We did mention you did mention some of the resources for learners, but there's also a ton of resources for educators. But but maybe just just take us through uh, where to get this wonderful uh, platform. Yes. Right okay. So pretty straightforward. I'm just. Um, so from if the, the place to start would really be to go to engage.snaplify.com. So um, if you are watching and you want to know where to go, this is where you, the starting point, engage.snaplify.com, and you click on sign your school up. Um, next, you'll um, ask what kind of school you represent, obviously ECD, primary school, your high school up here or if you've got uh, across junior school and uh, high school together so uh, this just really helps us to be able to focus the type of content that you're going to have access to so you're not um, you don't have irrelevant content and then um, sign your school up so first is your your school name and um, your full name and then your domain name so this would be essentially your internet address for your e-library and Snapify portal. So we always advise schools to keep it short. So if it was Snapify High School, we would say SHS, for example, to keep it short and uh, so that it's also uh, easier to spell. And then finally, just a little bit more information about your, your school or your organization. Finally, just continue and then you sign in as your with your own user. So we are integrated with Snap, with uh, Google and Microsoft. 
So uh, if you have a Google um, account or a Microsoft account, you can use those. And if you don't have either of the two, you can also sign in with Snaplify and create a Snaplify account to sign into. And off we go. You'll have to wait a few minutes just as your e-library and portal is set up. And off you go, you would end up with a portal that looks like this. Okay. And I'm going to just move to the platform itself just to give um, the audience a, a view of how it looks. And let me just share here. Okay, so if we go to the the portal, this is obviously the starting point, but once I've registered, I'll be able to sign in with whatever my URL is. So it's I'm signing in with Google. and I'm in Snaplify High School. This is just our demo store, but very, very easy to use. On the left-hand side, you can see a control panel, and you can see that you, whatever function you see in the control panel is related to whatever permissions you have as a user. So when, if you are registering for your school today, uh, you will automatically have administrative, librarian, and, and teacher um, permissions. So I'll show you how that looks in a moment. If I go into my users on the left-hand side, and I can see here, here are the permissions. Very easy to add a permission. I could just add the user and assign permission. So I believe this is being recorded. So if you forget, you can just come have a look and assign permissions to staff or whoever you load onto the system. But then once you have, um, created your portal Stephen, can I just interrupt yes you please yes I, just want to, I, I think if people want to engage in the platform they will get some training i'm sure we'll, we'll yeah. simply help them set up and there's there's online training uh i'm a student i want a free book the school gets the book how do how do i how do i get reading uh hmm. instead of using the platform if i can say it that that way uh, okay so no, I'm a student, what do i need a cell phone a laptop a tablet uh, any device so the platform is really it works on multiple operating systems so on your um, laptop on your tablet on your phone um, Chromebook um, it works on iOS also so um, any kind of device that you um, are using and then um, there are a number of ways that you can get your content easiest place would just be going to your favorites or the collections. And I'm just going to have a look here. So these are pre-collated collections that we've created. And these are, this is the view that a librarian would have that I can actually buy these books for my school library. Or once I've favored them, and as a student, I can just check it out. So if I check out, there we go. And here I can see our return date has been set for two weeks, I think. So that is 10th of March. And this is the day that the book is automatically gonna return itself. So again, um, just takes that barrier to entry away. And then once I've checked my book out, I can now go onto my reader. At the bottom of my screen, you can see my reader icon. This you can download for free from getsnapify.com. Um, and this al allows you and your um, learners to have access to the content without an internet connection. So once the book is downloaded, you have off offline access to it. So for example, these are, um, this is my life orientation textbook. You can Even download sorry, it. You're sharing a different screen now. I don't know if you, are you in your reader now? 
Oh, yes, I'm in my reader. Sorry, sorry. I am letting me just swap around here. Uh, there we go. Sorry, the, the, can you see that? Yes. Get, it, get yes. com. And once I've downloaded my titles, I can open them. So, for example, Lara, the Yellow Ladybird for Foundation Fairs um, teacher, to be able to put that up onto the screen. And, um, you know, a lot of people think you know, from a younger age, there's no place for digital content in the classroom. But uh, although we do um, in, suggest that um, younger readers develop their love for, for reading with um, hard copy books, um, this is a really great resource for teachers to be able to project onto the screen. Um, and it enables all the learners to, have, um, to be able to see the content at the same time. So I can work with the text um, and say, for example, I want to um, read with the learners. Can you identify the word ladybird? Okay, you can get the kids to come up, for example. And um, just some of the functionality for a teacher to be able to highlight content, but then also to add, for example, a YouTube clip or um, if I'm using resources such as Google Classroom or Microsoft um, Teams, I can take a clip directly from there and embed that in my free book that I'm using. So I can just click on there and take me directly to the video of ladybirds or insects or what I'm using. And this is a free resource, for example, that you know every school in South Africa has access to right now. And um, we have, yeah. Can I just quickly, you, 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 you jumped a little fast for me. Um, I was still looking at where a learner reads and then you, you position it as a classroom tool. So the same book the teacher can take out of the library um, and then showcase on the projector and laptop uh, in example, a class. Yeah. If, a, if a school has that type of technology and the class can read the book together and then mm. there's the annotations or highlights and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's, that's even a classroom tool, just the reading material, if, if I see that right. Um, I want to quickly ask some of the, the audience members to, if, if they're keen to type in some questions. Um, Stephen, just, just expand a little bit more on, uh, I mean, there's a library of free resources and then I would assume um, books to be bought, but yeah. the, the 50, 50 odd thousand free resources are already a starting point. And then if the school needs something, they, they buy that through the, through the Snaplify platform. Yes. But then, then, then there's also the not reading for pleasure text, uh, um, reading books. Then there's the textbooks and teacher guides or teacher support material. Just, just give us a minute or so on that. Let's see how the questions come in from the audience. Uh, there's a learning team. Yeah, so that's a big part of what we do, obviously, is um, just helping to support um, teachers and helping them to do what they do best and by providing them with the, the best content. And um, we're very excited to have, our uh, to have launched our teacher benefits program this year. And um, through uh, partnerships, we've been able to offer complimentary books spe specifically for teachers, um, really being able to reduce admin time, and providing schools with a, a one-stop shop for all their content for the annual procurement and for um, teacher aids for, for teachers. And then um, recently, we were very excited to have the Answer Series join us. So uh, the Answer Series have, have made all their um, study guides available absolutely free uh, for all teachers, which is um, such a great offer. I think many of us are familiar with the Answer Series guides. They're really um, respected and trusted but once um, the school has registered and they have their their, their portal um, they just the teacher can simply click um, view my books okay okay oh sorry let me go back to my overview and they can claim teacher benefits so right now because i've claimed mine already so right now you can click on uh if if a teacher goes in they will see um claim my teacher benefits and that will give them access i'm just going to show some of the books that are available to all the 
answer series content. So let me just share that with you. And it really is fantastic material um, across um, all grades from grade eight till 12 in um, English and Afrikaans. So just the ability for a teacher, for example, to be able to project this onto the screen, to use on their um, devices in the classroom and absolutely free. And the great thing is it's also obviously all caps aligned. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if the content is from America or from Europe, but that you can be able to project this in your class, um, knowing that this is aligned with the, the South African curriculum. Brilliant. Stephen, I'm, I'm just trying to manage uh, time a little bit and we still have a little mm. bit of a, a, an outro. We've got a few questions here. Two of them are language related and then you answered the, the uh, answer series is in English and Afrikaans. Um, so the question is, are the books available in different languages and what languages are available? Um, would it be anything published in the country? What, how, how do we cross the, bar, uh, the language barrier? So yes, um, uh, we have relationships with hundreds of different publishers. So any CAPS aligned textbook is available on the system. Um, and one of the one of the key areas that uh, we've developed is our, our live chat support uh, for teachers. So many teachers don't necessarily have the time to be following up on textbooks or if the availability of textbooks. So on the bottom right hand um, of the portal is a live chat and I'm just going to share this because this is a, a key area for um, teachers to engage and get the help that they're looking for. So on the bottom right there's a live chat which gives all teachers um, and learners access to instant support and if there is a title that they're looking for or that they can't find or any kind of issue with it, you know, they forgot what their password is or anything like that, they can um, access support immediately in their classroom. Um, you know, somebody doesn't have to come out to the school and you have to book a meeting, but you've got that instant uh, support, which is so important in the classroom. And then, right. um, yeah, so across all curricula, across all languages that are available for the CAPS curriculum. And then from a reading perspective, in um, all official um, languages in South Africa. Okay. We had a few questions on the language issue, so we, we, we just mm. uh, stumped, stumped a few questions on that one. Um, Stephen, before I get you to, to summarize for us what a school needs to do next, I, I actually just want to digress a little bit. Um, what I heard you saying, we don't have much time, but what I heard you saying is that once it's downloaded on the device, you don't need to download it again, so it's, it's native on the device, so you don't need constant internet to keep on reading. Am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. So once the book is downloaded onto your device or your phone, you don't need to be connected to the internet. And obviously this is critical in areas where there's poor um, internet connectivity. Um, and then also for areas that um, don't have any internet connection, we have the snap box, uh, which is basically an offline um, um, data um, platform where our all the content that a school is using sits locally at the school rather than being downloaded each time a learner needs a book or a teacher needs a book. So that um, goes a long way to making um, content available for, for schools, even in the remotest parts of, of the country. We've got, a, we've got a last question that I'm going to field and then I'm going to go into my outro, but there's a question about, does Snaplify have e-labs to do science uh, experiments? Um, my, my quick feeling is if if the science experiment is in a book you have it but if it's <laughs> it's not necessarily an e-lab or am i reading it mis uh, misreading that one well it's it's an interesting question we don't have e-labs but we do have content that is interactive and um, it's definitely worth having a look at um, our um, zoom in content from um, oxford university press it is a partnership that we're also very proud of. Um, and there is um, there are free samples available for teachers to explore. And um, basically, this gives uh, many of um, these uh, titles and modules have interactive content in them, uh, experiments, things like that, that are um, available offline also, which is really, really uh, powerful. It's um, 
also in English and Afrikaans and from all the FET phases, so grade 10 to 12. Brilliant. Stephen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. I quickly want to show the um, audience what FETSAS has been doing, um, and, and it's, it's demystifying the use of a, an e-reader more, that we're not talking about the platform, but more so about the content. Uh, so, ladies and gents, what, what FETSAS has done, we, we have uh, two publications that we have loaded onto the Snaplify um, platform for our member schools or any, any member of the public to get access to some of our information. Uh, I'm going to try and quickly go there with my um, sharing my screen. So, uh, do you want to continue? Yes. So, so what we what we've done is to launch um, FETSAS content. The introduction to uh, or a practical guide to school governance in eleven languages. So we're multi language on that again. Uh, I'm sure you can see my screen. Just let me know. Um, Paul, am I sharing my screen? Can someone just? Yeah, we can see. Yes. So, so I've downloaded I've downloaded the the Snaplify reader onto my own computer, and there we have um, a stack of five five of the books that are available: a practice onloading where school was the the Zulu and the Tswana option, the English option, as well as um, uh, the King Report on school governance, and then I also downloaded a free book from from the library. So this is in my space for my computer. And if I want to go look and reference one of the FETSAS um, booklets, it's for sale at about 120 Rand. Uh, you can get it off the Snaplify platform. There you go. If you're a new SGB member or you're doing induction training for someone that filled a vacancy recently, this is one of the best booklets that, that is around the country. And there you go. It's downloaded onto my computer. It's downloaded onto my phone. I've got five devices that can do this. And every person in the country can have this book without using paper. Uh, and we haven't even mentioned the green effect of, of, of ebooks uh, for Stephen. So, so this is just what we're making available with the use of a platform to get information to people out there. If I go to, um, I'm hoping that uh, my screen is still, the full screen is shared. If you yeah. go to the, to the Snaplify shop and you just type in FedSAS, Maybe I should just, before I search, show, show the audience. So the FETSAS publications, which we're very proud of, quality publications, we load it onto the Snaplify shop. You get to shop.snaplify.com and you type in FETSAS. Okay, Rian, I think you, you're, not, you're still showing the reader. I'm still showing the reader. Let me just um, share the other screen and share again. Sorry about that. Are you seeing? Are you seeing this shop There we go. Yeah, we. So, we've seen so, it. so if I if I go to the shop dot uh, platform, and there is, I don't know, a host of books out there. If I search for FedSAS, uh, and the next thing I will see the results of all the publications that are done by FedSAS in the different languages, and you just add it to your cart. This is like shopping on Take a Lot, and then it falls into the reader, which is the other page that I shared earlier. So you can go ahead now, register at Snaplify. It's not the library. You can just become a, a user of the reader. And then you've got your, your uh, governance material in the palm of your hand everywhere you go. So we're very proud to, to have launched this uh, early January for our members. It's part of the um, newsletter that we sent out last week. Um, but we would love people to go and see uh, how it works, uh, consume our material, uh, give us questions and, and comments about that. But this is how easy it is to get the book onto your platform. Um, I think we're running out of time. Paul, we're going to throw back to you and maybe just give, give Stephen a 30-second blurb for what can school, schools do next to in, uh, engage in this journey. Steve? Um, thanks, Rian. So I think the, the main place to start would to go to um, the uh, um, Engage portal, and I'm just going to put it up on the screen for everybody to see. Okay. I think the, this would be the first place to start, engage.snappify.com and sign your school up. So really straightforward.
engage.snapfire.com. Register your school, chat on the bottom right of the corner. So that, that is the, the, the main, if I had to share, the, the, the main points would be, remember what your URL is when you register your school. So write this down, whatever you put in here. So this is going to be your internet address. And if you have any hassles at all, use the, the live chat. And it's, it's something that um, South Africans, I don't think we're very confident in is using remote support. But it's definitely something that we're changing um, that uh, our live support has got excellent results and really positive feedback from schools and learners and teachers. So don't be, don't be shy, use the live chat if you have any hassles whatsoever. And um, you can also use the knowledge base. So if you click at the top of the live chat, you'll see that there is a um, portal that can lead you to your knowledge base and that'll help you to um, with any questions that you have about the Snapify platform. Brilliant. Stephen, we're running out of time. Uh, it's always fun uh, looking at great solutions. Uh, I'm going to leave to Paul to, uh, to close the session. I just want to, from my point of view, say uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for in, enlightening us and thanks for this wonderful resource available to schools. I think you're making a big impact. The hope is now that schools use it. Uh, mm. and, and I want to challenge school management, school leaders, uh, governing body members, teachers to say, if it's for free and we don't use it, it's by not, by not using it. Uh, we would have paid for it. Um, and, and to get kids reading and to get kids engaged in reading, to have uh, teachers and educators with better resources and better availability, uh, of resources, why not? There's nothing to lose here. So, mm -hmm. so, so from my point of view, thank you to to Snappy for the for the impact that it's making in the education space, and thanks for being a, a valuable diamond member of the Center for Technology. And I'm sure we're going to chat about this space a lot more. Um, yeah, any school that needs needs information, please contact me at the Center of Technology via the FETSAS uh, website. Uh, Paul, over to you to just wrap it up. Uh, I don't know if there's a late question that came in or anything, but thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you to the audience. Yeah, no, just pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much, Stephen. Um, yeah, just a, a thanks once again from our CEO, Paul Colditz, just sent me a message to say, please just thank Stephen for all his work and all the effort that's being put into here. I don't think people realize the value that's sitting on this platform. Um, and I have to say that your bot works very well because I tried it while I was in the background and it works. Yeah, okay, that's good to hear. It does work really, really well from that side because I did forget my password. So thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> I think people go, go and play with it. Go sit on the platform. Go see what it's about. There's a huge amount of content there. Obviously, some of it's going to be paid for, but there's a huge amount of free content available. And we don't have an excuse to say, no, we haven't got books in the school anymore. There, there's actually a way of actually getting it in place now. Um, very easily available, very easily accessible, and very simple to follow through the processes. So thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you, Rian, for hosting this process. Um, we really look forward to seeing more activation on it. And yeah, from, from my side, Stephen, I think from the educational side, thanks very much. I think there's a huge amount of, of value in this content that's here, and people now need to go and, and start using it. And then I think it's going to activate really hugely in that, in that sense from there. So Thank you very much, everybody. I will be sending a link through to everybody who's registered so they can get further information. But yeah, but don't wait for that link. Go on to engage.snaplify.com and find out what it's about and go play around on the platform and see where you can go from there. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.